great detective Remington Steele? He doesn't exist. I invented him. The woman behind the man, Miss Laura Holt. Until the day he walked in, with his blue eyes and mysterious past. Remington Steele is an elaborate ruse. He does not exist. We never mix business with pleasure. Well, almost never. I think it's time they found me. Remington Steele. Weeknights at 8, 7 central on MeTV. Hi, I'm John Mallison. Welcome to Connect With Me here on Comcast and 43.6. Today is debate day. We're talking again about the Fresno Unified School District. Three board members, well, three members that want to be board members. They are running for office. Your phone calls are very important. 559-265-4331. We've got three people that want to be on the school board in our studio today. Call in a very important topic. And welcome back to the program here on Connect With Me on this Friday morning, live from the showroom floor at Ventura TV. And, you know, it's debate day again. We're talking about the Fresno Unified School District. But one, you know, one thing before we get started, because I'm a very superstitious guy, and you know, if you've watched this program, I'm so much into sports and love what the Giants are doing. They went up 2-0 on the Tigers last night with a 2-0 victory. It was a great game. I had to mention that for good luck. They go into game three Saturday, game four, and then game five if necessary. I am heavily rooting for the Giants. All right, to the school board now, very important issue. We're talking about area two, three people running for one seat. Larry Moore has decided that he is not going to run, and so his seat is left open. Now, a lot going on at the Fresno Unified School District, as you know. Michael Hansen, the superintendent, is under fire. The dropout rates, the graduation rates, uh, truancy is a big thing. You remember the three-part series, the three articles that the Fresno Bee wrote last year, late last year in November, uh, brought a lot of outrage as far as some community members are concerned because of the number of students who are truant. Think about it. Right now, as we speak, at 10.30 in the morning, is your kid in school? How many kids are truant? How many kids are skipping school, out causing trouble, or getting into trouble, or being arrested? That's the topic today. We're talking about the Fresno Unified School Board, area number two, live in our studio right now. Uh, screen left to right, Luis Chavez, Esmeralda Diaz, and Darren Miller. They're all here waiting to take your phone calls, but let me warn you, yesterday we had uh, sporadic calls and one caller called in to ask about programming or something else. When you do call in at area code 559-265-4331, make sure you stick to the topic. Today we're talking about the Fresno Unified School District. The election is on November the 6th, and make sure to turn down the sound on your television as well. We're back with our three guests and your phone calls in just a moment. Don't go away. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the save energy, save time, save money place. The Energy Star qualified number one rated high efficiency cabrio from Whirlpool Place. You heard right. Right now, save big on select Whirlpool cabrio laundry pairs and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. At the hometown low price, think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place. And we're back, 265-4331 is the phone number here if you want to call in and question our guest regarding uh, their run for office at uh, Fresno Unified School Board, area number two. We've got Luis Chavez, Esmeralda Diaz, and Darren Miller all sitting right here, uh, screen left to right, uh, in order. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here. Thank you, John. All right, let's start with you, Luis. Sure. And the first question is for all of you, but we'll start with you. Michael Hansen, should he go or should he stay? Yeah, I get, I get that question all the time uh, out there as I've gone door to door and, and talked to a lot of the constituents and, you know, having that dialogue with them. I think if people remember uh, a couple of years ago, um, uh, the, the district was on the verge of being taken over by the state. 
Uh, financial books were out of whack. Uh, Michael Hans came in, uh, did a pretty decent job of stabilizing us fiscally. But I think where we dropped the ball was where we did not do enough community and parent outreach. And those are the areas that we have to really focus on and come together as a community. So, so if, I, go? if I had to give him a, a grade, it would be a B with room for improvement. So um, he should stay then, I, according I, to you. Well, I, it depends on what he does for the community. You know, I can't commit to saying he should go or he should stay. I'd have to look at it and see what we're going to evaluate him on. But currently what I would do is really focus on doing the community parent outreach, which I believe he has not done so in, the way I'm getting this is you're willing to give him another chance so that means stay it depends it depends on what uh, vision uh, we outline and if, right. and if he proposes a program or a policy that meets the needs of the children in our district I will support that but if he does not then I'll work with him to make sure that those needs are met all right what about you Esmeralda well uh, you know, I always, when I get this question, one of the things I have to be let everybody know clearly that I'm not running because uh, Michael Hansen. I'm running because the community, because the kids. That is the reason I'm running. But a lot of people think Michael Hansen is the problem in the district, along with the school board members that are there now. So should he go or should he stay? Let me let me let me tell you this. I am worried about the 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 way the administration is uh, been taking uh, all the decisions. Yes, I am. I mean, it's obvious. We can see everywhere, every single day in the first movie, we see new uh, commentaries about problems with the district. But uh, again, our focus, main focus, it has to be, must be community and kids. And uh, Not to be to rude, but should he go or should he stay, in your opinion? It's very uh, radical. It's very radical that uh, we are here sitting now just to tell you, okay, he's going to go, he's going to stay <coughs> again. My focus is the kids, is the kids and the community. We have so to no evaluate everything. So no commitment one way or the other as to whether or not he should go or stay from you. It's, it's my, that is my main focus right now, uh, John, right. is uh, to uh, get what the, is the interest for the uh, students that are suffering in area but two. But the effects that, that the superintendent and the school board is having on the kids is a reflection of what's going on. So sh doesn't it, everything start at the, st at the top? It's everywhere. I think this is a teamwork, and I think that there is no working the teamwork. Right. Uh, we are not uh, connecting each other. The district is not just one. It's not just one. It's the whole uh, uh, school board with the uh, superintendent as well. Darren, can you give me a more direct answer about Michael Hansen? I can. Michael Hansen will determine his own um, destination. Um, he works for the board, um, and right now he's been un, um, supported by the board um, and some of the positive things he's done and some of the, the things that he needs to change. Well, he's uh, been supported by Tony Vang, Valerie Davis, Carol Mills, and Janet Ryan. If you know politics like we do, <laughs> anytime you can count to four on a seven-member board, then you've got support and you're able to do exactly what it is that you want to yeah. do. Larry Moore was not a supporter of his, Correct. and Michelle Azadorian is not a supporter of his. Um, True, but they also have not been very vocal in, in their attempts um, to a, a, or their um, negative uh, dispositions towards them. You know, because you leave a meeting, that doesn't mean that you're in opposition. You're 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 there to serve a purpose for the community that's put you in that place, and you leaving from a meeting is absconding of your 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 obligations. Michael Hansen will define whether or not he stays or goes by the new board that comes in. If, if you're elected to the mm -hmm. board, would you support him? Would you I, be a Michael Hansen backer or an opposer? What I would be doing is setting a destination, setting some goals and and, and such as such as communication. He needs to get out and he needs to avail himself to the community. You have people in this community who don't even know who Michael Hansen, what he looks like. Um, he's got to get out of his uh, comfort zone and extend um, his self to the community, and that's not happening right now. Okay. I would set a plan for him to be able to do that, and if he doesn't it, it, it adhere to that then there will be some changes that will be necessary. Okay, let's take uh, to the phones here. Good morning, you're on Connect With Me. What's your specific question, please? Yeah, I couldn't understand nothing she said. Can you have her repeat what she said, please? All right, I'm sorry, can you talk directly into the phone and what's your question? Okay, they hung up. I don't know what the, what the problem was. Uh, your question was, can you repeat what she said? Okay, they hung up. I don't know what the point. The question was, did you guys hear any of that? I didn't. Yeah, I didn't yeah. get any of it. Okay. He didn't understand um, something about yeah, what did, it was. Yeah, didn't didn't understand any of it. But so so, um, this is the sense that I'm getting from all three of you regarding Michael Hansen, uh, is non-committal, willing to give him a chance, 
What do you think of the school board and the makeup of the school board now? Let's start with you, Darren. The, the school board has not been uh, following through with their responsibilities. In what way? Um, they have basically been a rubber stamp um, for the superintendent, and that's not the way um, the governing boards of educational systems are supposed to be. The board is supposed to develop plans and policies that engages and supports the students and the community, and they haven't done that. Basically what has happened is that the superintendent has set that direction and the board has supported it. That needs to change. What do you think of the makeup of the board and how they're handling things now? I think uh, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, I've been noticing is that uh, we must study. I think their job is to study every single proposal that uh, it comes to the table. It has to be studied, the, uh, read the facts, that it means the truth, and comparing. We have to, we must do our job in order to, to, for me to come and say, I'm going to support this. It has to be with facts. Okay, Luis, in order for the board to do their job, mm -hmm. they're the boss. Exactly. They're the boss. They're in charge of the superintendent. They're in charge of the school district. They make decisions. Should the board separate themselves, the board members, from the superintendent and his staff so they can make adequate and fair decision making absolutely i think you you look at the structure of that board and you look at what their responsibilities what their role is and how i see things is that board is responsible for outlining policies and programs and services that are going to be provided to the community michael hansen's job is to implement that are those board members too close to hansen I don't know. Um, I'm not an incumbent. I don't know what the dynamics are there, but I'll tell you what I do if I am elected is every year the superintendent is evaluated, and that's where that board has an opportunity to outline very specific goals and objectives that are designed to close but that achievement gap. But you can't do that if the board is too close to the superintendent. You've got to keep a distance, a certain distance. Am I right, Darren? Yeah, I agree. Um, and I don't know about their personal relationships, but I do know that, they, that there are members on the board. Currently, they sit on other boards with Michael Hansen. I don't think that's a great position to put Is yourself. Michael Hansen a bully like a lot of people have characterized <laughs> him as a bully? He bullying has. some employees, bullying some community members? I don't know about the employees and those type of things, but I do know that he has a very aggressive posture and a, a very aggressive demeanor. Would you call it bullying? In some cases, I'm quite sure it can be defined as, as bullying. Um, I don't know. I've not been a recipient of that. And so right. I just know from my observation that he is very aggressive in his mannerisms, and that's not necessarily the best position to take as a superintendent. Right. All right. We've got three great guests here today. We've got Luis Chavez, Esmeralda Diaz, Darren Miller, all great people running for the office of Area 2, Fresno Unified School District. Carol Mills and Janet Ryan decided not to be on this program, just for your information. 265-4331 is the number. Back with more in just a moment. And now, the Alan Brady Show. Hi, I'm Alan Brady. You remember me from the Alan Brady Show? Yes, sir. if Alan needs any help. Shut up, Mel. Yes, sir. Shut up, Mel. Shut up, Mel. Yes, sir. I have the best TV writers on my show. Rob Petrie. <laughs> Sally Rogers. Hey, I got it. Don't anybody move. And Buddy Sorrell. Well, well, how you moved, I forgot it. On the Dick Van Dyke Show here. Alan, if you're... Shut up, Mel on me tv weeknights at 9 30 8 30 central on me tv what's the matter with you okay and we're back here on connect with me with our three guests luis chavez esmeralda diaz and darren miller running for area two uh fresno unified school board so why do you think janet ryan and carol mills didn't want to show up here and debate <laughs> the issues what's your take <laughs> well i i cannot tell you what i think because i'm not them but uh, uh, I have the opportunity. I'm gracious for that. Right. Um, it's, uh, I think uh, the community has the right to hear from us. And it's a good chance. All right. Take another chance on a phone call here. Good morning. You're on Connect With Me. What's your question to these uh, potential, potential board members here? Oh, I wanted to find out what they thought, their opinion of charter schools, and if they're successful. Okay, let's start with you, Esmeralda. Charter schools, what, what's your thought on charter schools? Well, we well known that uh, charter schools are having a lot of problems, especially the new millennium. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of questions are gonna come because that, and especially like today in the newspaper, again, another commentary about this school. I think they should be evaluated uh, we must, like I said, we have to really see the facts. We cannot, we have to stop covering up and especially have a big conflict of interest. And in this case, like uh, Mr. Uh, Johnson and uh, uh, how he wasn't appearing and getting paid by the district and being, being a board, 
uh, member. If this is a big conflict of interest, we must uh, see where we're standing when we decide to do anything. Charter schools? Um, I think for charter schools or any school, the ultimate measurement should be what kind of outcomes, what kind of results are we getting for our kids? So there's a time and place for all of them. Um, I would be supportive of some, but I would want to see some very specific results as far as graduation rates, as far as closing those achievement gaps with our students. Darren? Charter schools were originally intended for students who did not fit into the traditional school settings. And unfortunately, charter schools are becoming the first option for many students who don't want to go to traditional school settings. And that's not the, nest, that's not the reason that we should have charter schools. Um, and so I agree that we need to go back in there and evaluate them on a one-to-one -one basis to make sure that they're meeting the needs of the students. Graduation rates. We're going to put those numbers up on the screen real quick. Uh, these come from the California Department of Education. But, of course, these numbers can be skewed one way or the other. We're looking at the high schools. These are some of the latest figures. Uh, maybe not up to the minute, but they're pretty recent. Uh, Roosevelt, Edison, Bullard, Sunnyside, Hoover, Fresno, and McLean at 71.1%. Hmm. Do those numbers impress you, or are you disappointed? Let's start with Darren. I think those numbers are inflated, actually. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what is the calculations that they used, Fresno Unified used to come Out up with Out of those, those high schools that you see uh, right there, which one has the biggest problem, in your opinion? Well, I don't think it's a matter of one or the other. I think that there's a huge um, problem with all of the high schools in Fresno. You've got 70,000 students in Fresno Unified that are being served by seven comprehensive high schools. That's 10,000 students per stream. Too, far too many students in there. They need to look at some alternative options for students. Are those numbers inflated? Um, I don't know. I haven't had a chance to look at that. Uh, these current numbers. I know that last year there was a report that said the district wide had a 66 yeah, percent. what's your okay? Plan. You're not you're not knowing. But what's sure. your what's your take on my it? What's your feeling? Are they inflated? Sure. What you have an opinion? Don't I you? absolutely have an opinion, and my opinion is that in order to one child too many dropping out is too many. Right. With those numbers. Right. But what we need to do is address the issue at the root cause. A lot of our students are not going to four year college or universities, so we need to give them the option of vocational training programs. That's one of my priorities that I have right. for our platform. That's where we're really going to chip away at that number. All right. Esmeralda, what do you think of those numbers there? I think uh, what they did is that, uh, in my case, because as I am representing Roosevelt, 87.6, I think they are using the seniors just for the seniors. They are not counting since the four years uh, students because we have the, the case of uh, 2006. The, the, I'm pretty the, the sure number, you remember that. The numbers for Latinos, though, in the district and at those high schools is is, is lower. It's 69% last year. Black students for 2011, 64% of black students graduate. That's a very low number. And for the Mongs, it's even lower. And Asians, even lower. So are they doing enough? No, they no, are not. No, no. no, they are not. And let me tell you something else. Not just that. We have another subgroup, uh, John, that they calls uh, English learners. And please don't take that uh, wrong. When we're talking about English learners, we're not talking about only people who only speak Spanish. We're talking about different languages. Remember, we have 72 in this district, and we are not serving those groups. And that is the biggest group that uh, uh, is failing. They are the, the ones that are having the dropout the biggest. All right. Dropout rates. want to put that up on the screen here. This is kind of interesting to me. It makes me kind of laugh. Look at that. Uh, many administrators, teachers, and community leaders think that the dropout rate in Fresno Unified is 30 to 40 percent even higher. <laughs> the school district, Michael Hansen and company, they say, no, 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 no. It's about 15 to 20 percent. What's your take? Darren? Definitely the larger number. Um, as Louis <laughs> said earlier, it's about 64 percent um, graduation rate. And when, you, when I say that, I'm talking about students who actually enter high school as ninth graders and then finish after four years stay. It's, it's uh, definitely about the 30 or 40 percent. If you were a betting person, Esmeralda, what, what would you say it was? Over 50 percent or what the district says? <laughs> definitely. If it's that, it had, that is the only choice I have. I have to go higher, definitely. How about you? Yeah, I think it's, it's a little bit higher than that 20 percent. I mean, those of us that live in this community see it on a daily basis. And, and you know, the effect do you think it's over 50? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's that quite that high. Uh, but I do think it's probably in the 30th, uh, 40 percentile. A lot of people have said, and critics of Michael Hansen in the district have said, that the district is paying too much attention to the upper echelon students, the ones that are going to go to USC, Notre Dame, US, uh, UCLA, University of Oregon, and yet the lower echelon is being crunched to the bottom. Your take on that? I don't think that that's accurate. 
because um, there's less students going to four-year schools, as Louis said earlier. There's less students going to four-year schools overall. It's not just the lower students not making but it. Is, but the question is, is right. Fresno Unified paying too much attention to the upper echelon because not every student is going to college? Yeah, well, but a, a lot of people don't understand this. Is the requirements to go to college in the state of California is to be 18 years old or a high school graduate. And a lot of people turn their nose down to community colleges, but community co going the route of community college is a very viable resource to be able to get students to four-year schools. So I, I, I hesitate to say that kids can't go to college because that's not necessarily true. They may not be able to take the traditional They route. may not want to go to college. Yeah, tr right. Exactly. I mean, that's different, though, saying that they can't get into college because they're not qualified and saying that they're not, they, they don't want to. But some don't have the same things. grades as others. May, they may not have a, a straight-A average or 4.0 average. But it has average. nothing to do with grades. A student who did not graduate from high school, who lives to be 18 years old in, the, in this glorious state of California, can still go to community college. And still, the light, can, light bulb can go on at that time, they still can make it to a four-year school. we got to take a break. Mm -hmm. We're here with our three guests today, and we're talking about the Fresno Unified School District, 265-4331. Back in a minute. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the save energy, save time, save money place. The Energy Star qualified, ready, steam equipped, high efficiency Frigidaire Affinity Place. You heard right. Right now, save big on select Frigidaire laundry pairs and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. At the hometown low price, think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place. And we're back with our three guests here on Connect With Me. I want to ask you, if Proposition 30 passes, that means that about $7.4 million is going to go to preschools. Shouldn't that money be used for vocational purposes instead of preschool? Let's start with you, Esmeralda. Of course, we have to, uh, uh, I think the three of us, we agree that uh, we do need more options, and one of them is uh, vocational uh, schools. I, we have a, uh, I was invited to the Roosevelt for a forum with the students. They are asking for those uh, vocational. I have a student who, who is uh, a straight A's, and she wants, uh, wants to be a designer in clothing. There it goes. They, it is not that they don't want to, they are the ones say, saying that they needed it. That they don't want to go be a doctor or be a lawyer, engineering. They, they are asking. They are already asking for it. Vocational schools, good or bad? No, that's a good thing. Um, I think also the other side of it is that preschool needs to be bolstered as well. We know that students who get an early education are more likely to be successful later on. I just disagree that the, with the whole process. I think that the way that they came up with those figures and those numbers um, the board came to that part. It was one of those examples of the superintendent having an initiative, pushing it, and the board coming f following, rather than the other way around. Vocational, yes or no? Uh, absolutely. That's one of the, my top priorities, vocational training. I had it when I attended Roosevelt, and I think it would benefit our communities that chipping away at that dropout rate number. Okay. And, be, and again, vocational schools, because not everyone's going yeah. to college. Whether you want to admit it or not, no, no. they're just yeah. not going to do it. Now, let's get into the Tony Bang thing. How should his seat be replaced? The, the seat's been empty now since... Uh, I don't know, mid-September, something like that. Should the board decide who's going to fill that seat, or should it go to a vote, the public? I'll, I'll go first. I, I fundamentally believe in the basic tenet of democracy that those representatives are elected by the people. I think they should go to a vote for the people. Okay, you? Definitely. <laughs> Look at us. I mean, we have to, uh, democracy, I mean, they're going to represent the community. It has to be elected by the community. You? Definitely has to be elected by the community. The problem is is that the board has sat on it so long that they're running out of time. They have a 60-day window where they have to make a, a replacement, which I believe is November 17th. So how do you get the, the, the community involved now? Um, let's, let's see what this phone call is all about. Good morning. You're on Connect With Me. How are you? What's your specific question? Now, I haven't heard too much of what the board does for the school south of Barstow. Do they ever put, have any input? into the lives of the students here in this area or on this side of uh, Fresno? I mean, I'll take my answer off. off, off. Uh, south, south of Barstow? Yeah, south of Barstow. I think that's how I took yeah. that. You yeah. want to pick that up? South, south, south of Barstow. I mean, and this is, I've lived in this area, area two, for the last 43 years. Um, I worked in this area being a vice principal down at Kings Canyon High School. I was a vice principal um, at Fresno High School at Edison, so I have some keen interest in what goes on in Fresno Unified. Um, yeah. Been in education for the last 22 years, and so 
um, most of that time has been spent south of, of Barstow. So. Should the district be split in half? A lot of people say, you know what, it's too big. It's the fourth largest district in the state of California. There are too many students to handle at one time. Too much for one superintendent, one school board. There are just too many people involved. You? Yeah, there, there are so many dynamics to that. And I actually looked into it. I believe Florida did um, uh, did split a district up. So there's there's uh, issues about how do you split the assets, you know, who gets what, the, the tax base. Would you do it? Base. I would want to see something on paper before I commit to, to anything like how that. How about you? Well, uh, I have uh, I used to live in uh, Salinas, California, and they do work uh, one district for just the high schoolers and one for the elementary school and middle schools. And uh, I mean, here, don't go too far. Sanger, Sanger is a small uh, community, a small uh, district, and they are doing so good. But uh, still, I need to to see it. And like I said before, I need to uh, study the facts, see everything, and then I will give my opinion. You. Definitely needs to be, we, business needs to be done in a different way. Um, I don't, I'm not totally committed to splitting, taking a knife and splitting the district in half, but there definitely has to be some other ways of doing business. One of the things that just happened at the last board meeting two nights ago is that they are going back to the old pyramid system. Yeah. They're now calling them areas. They're going to divide the district into seven areas, um, which the, the high school will be the focal point. Maybe that's one of the ways to offset some of that, those pressures that they have. I want to ask you this question, because you've been in education quite some time now. Javier Guzman, who heads up the Chicano Youth Center, uh, told the Fresno Bee that half the Latino kids are dropping out, half of the dropouts are committing crimes. The Fresno Unified School District is nothing more than a feeder system for the California prison system. Would you agree with that? Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of elements of truth in what Mr. Guzman says. Um, the, if you look at any statistics, kids who do not graduate from high school, more than likely within the first five years after their um, supposed graduation date are involved in the criminal justice system in some way. And Would you so agree with that? Definitely. It's, uh, it is true that a lot of our kids are dropping out, especially the Latinos, but the specifically the, the district, Fresno Unified uh, kids are going more to that. It has to be. Then let's go back to my original question. <laughs> the buck stops where? At Michael Hansen's desk, does it not? The buck stops with the board. The board is responsible for outlining policy. His job is to implement that. So that's what my approach would be on that. And f as far as the comment you made about Mr. Guzman, I, I mean, I think oftentimes, you know, I'm tired of, of people singling out a particular group. They're saying that they're the ones committing the crimes. No, we're not just a bunch of dropouts in our community. We have a lot of positive stories. So you don't think what Guzman here. said is true? I think what he did about singling you think he's out exaggerating? just exaggerating? No, but for him to single out just Latinos is not fair to our community as well. Okay. But now you go back to the board deciding. Sure. Two years ago, Guzman said that he wanted to form a city dropout commission and the roadblocks were thrown up by Michael Hansen. He didn't want it brought up at the board meeting. He didn't want it brought up at the city council meeting because he didn't want the city and the community leaders becoming involved. So the buck does stop there. Right. It sounds to me like he was hindering the process. Right, but the board ultimately is responsible for that. And I think if you're just going to single out, this election is not about one person. This has been just amazing to me. You know, okay. as we go door to door and talk to constituents, this election is about one thing and one thing only, and that's the education of our children. And I think often people forget, like, you know, we mentioned earlier, the superintendent works for the board, and that board works for the people that represent. But that vision has been lost in recent years, has it not? Well, I think what we need is a clear vision for him to implement. Once we have that, then that assigns him responsibility to the action plan and, yeah. act and responsibility for results, which do is you, what we want. Do you think that vision has been lost over the last few years? The board has to separate itself from the the upper echelon. I guess it would be the superintendent. I'm not saying, I'm saying I won't say that it's been lost, but I think the roles have been reversed. Um, the superintendent has been setting the policies and procedures instead on, of the board. Instead of the board, um, and that's not the way it's supposed to be and and really i think that this election is more about a referendum on the sitting board members than it is with mr hansen i've got to give you the last word because we're almost out of time quick quick i don't want to get cut off well <laughs> like, like we were talking about mr ben we this is the reason we are elected and we have to do our job we 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 must study everything that we have in in our table in order to take a decision and we must do our job again uh, take care of the 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 kids and our community Luis, Esmeralda, Darren, thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you. Uh, Fresno Area School Board, Fresno Unified School District. You had a vote on November 6th. On Monday, we've got Pat DeChico and Steve Brandau running for city council. That seat that was left open by Andreas Borges. See you then. Have a great weekend. Go Giants. Oh, yeah.